Welcome to the Deep Light Podcast from Park City's Presbyterian Church. This is a space for community, healing, hope, and education around topics of rescue and growth. Our prayer for this series is that it illuminates a deeper understanding of struggles within and around us, as well as God's profound love and redemptive light in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome everybody back to another episode of Deep Light. Uh, My name is Mark Davis. I serve as one of the pastors of Park City East Presbyterian Church. And Deep Light is meant to be a a gift to help people just thinking about their life, particularly their life in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And today we're going to be talking about rest. It's the summer of 2022, and we have been uh, talking with different people about how they have rhythms in their life that help them find rest, Mm. particularly what does it look like from a biblical perspective about the kind of rest that God is calling us to. And today, two of the elders in our church and two dear friends, Ed Jarrett and Bob McCamey, are going to share a little bit about their life and how they've grown to appreciate rhythms that give rest, which ultimately is good for their souls, but also brings glory to God. So Mm. brothers, thanks for taking time to be with me today. And (laughs) I know we've shared a lot of space on silent retreats and other things like that and really focusing on rest and have shared the way in which God has transformed our lives through that. So I know those watching or listening today, whenever it might be, are going to be encouraged by, uh, you know, what God's taught you over time. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is just start a little bit about your own story of coming to faith. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. You know, how old were you? What were the circumstances around your life? And how did the Lord draw you to himself? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start that, Mark, because uh, just this last week, uh, there was a celebration in Dallas commemorating the 50th anniversary of Expo 72. Yeah. And that's when I was saved. I was two years out of college, uh, thought I had the world by the tail, but uh, was quickly learning I didn't. And it was during the middle of the week, uh, Susan, my wife, uh, she, we were not married at that time, but we were going to the Cotton Bowl every night. And Wednesday night of that week, um, I trusted Christ. I knew that I was a sinner. I'd been convicted by some teaching by Josh McDowell and some of those men that mm-hmm. had done Explo and um, instantly knew mm-hmm. the weight of sin was lifted off of me when I prayed a sinner's prayer. Mm-hmm. It was that simple. So, and you know, we talk about people, sometimes they don't know the date or the hour, but I knew specifically there was a time when, when Jesus came into my heart and saved me. And that's been 50 years ago. Wow. So, it's special. So, you know, you've heard me say it from the pulpit recently. I celebrated my 40th mm-hmm. you know, birthday of life in Christ on right. June 23rd, 1982. Mm-hmm. So to think about that, you know, the, it's, it's great to have a date, but not everybody does. And right. that doesn't matter. You know, there's a, just the confidence and assurance that there's a time in which the Lord revealed himself to you mm-hmm. and you trusted in him. But I don't know if I remembered it happening to you at Expo mm-hmm. 72. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in Dallas yeah, a lot of came people. to Christ. Yeah during that, uh, that event. Oh, I've had fr- friends that were on crusade staff back at that time that I met years later and they'd say, we were praying for guys just like you. Yeah. you know, that, and thank the Lord they were. Yeah. You know, so it was a special event. So. Well, we'll come back in a minute and talk about kind of how you progressed in mm. understanding you know, the word of God and particularly how to be obedient even to the Sabbath, the mm. idea of rest and what that means. Mm. Bob, how about you? Tell us about your coming to faith. Well, I grew up in a family where there was never a day I didn't know the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, what a blessing that was. Um, I was baptized when I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, I came to the profound uh, realization of who Christ was at a summer camp in West Texas, uh, up in the Davis Mountains, um, just through some faithful witnesses. Um, It was a Christian camp, and just by a steady teaching and application, I really, at the age of 13, my eyes were just open to what Mm. salvation and Christ and, and... it hasn't been an easy walk, right? right. It's, it's always uh, uh, up and down. Yeah. All right. But um, but that was really when my eyes were first opened to the to the meaning of Jesus and salvation. Mm. Mm. Well, I know you brothers well, and have watched over the last maybe ten years, um, particularly with silent retreats and a focus we've had on going up to Colorado, mm. and mm. you guys have experienced those. You've helped lead those. 
Well, I want to talk about that. I want to talk not just about the retreats, but about the rhythms that we need as believers, mm. particularly as it relates to taking God's word seriously about rest, about the Sabbath. And you're both, you know, from outside looking in, you're very successful, man. You know, you, you have just been blessed with so many things. How has, in the last few years, mm. your understanding of the need to rest in Christ, to be quiet, to be still, mm. to pray, how has that changed in your life and therefore how has it changed your life? Mm. You know, I think one of the things I'd have to say is getting older. Uh, you know, as you get older and you, you see that uh, you know, as you move through the various decades, you have various highs and lows through the decades of your life. But uh, as I've gotten older, uh, I begin to see that rest was more than just physical rest. Mm. Uh, it really became important to me to know what soul care and spiritual rest and, and a deep abiding rest really mm -hmm. was. And mm -hmm. thanks to you and some of your teachings, some of the things the Lord showed you on your silent retreats uh, have translated to us. And uh, it's, it's been a good, good system, a good rhythm, because I lived most of my young years as a Christian thinking if I could just get all my work done, I could stop and rest. Mm -hmm. And of course, I never got caught up. Yeah, you know, I'd yeah. have seasons where I'd get a little more ahead or not, but I, I was under that delusion thinking if I could just stop and physically rest, that was enough. And uh, I, I see as I get older, that's, that's just not the case. That certainly right. rest and sleep are important, but there, there's something about that abiding solitude and quietness before God that really has had an impact in my life in the last 10 years. So when you talk about <clears throat> abiding, that's one, it's a religious word, mm -hmm. it's a biblical word, some watching might not really know what that word means. And it, it's really simple, it means remain, mm -hmm. you know, it means, it really is about our union with Christ. John 15, if you're watching or listening, you might be interested in reading what Jesus wrote there. But he's talking about that remaining connected, mm -hmm. I am the vine, you are the branches. So you're, you're in him. For a lot of people, I think, they, they tend to think of Christ being a Christian as something where you're, decompartmentalizing your life. Like, mm. I have my life in Christ and I go to church, mm. but after that, yeah. it's kind of whatever I want. And that's not it at all, is right. it? You know, it's this abiding intimacy mm -hmm. with the Lord where he, through his word and spirit, tells us how we ought to live, what's important. Mm -hmm. And clearly from the beginning of scripture to the end, he makes rest a theme mm -hmm. of, of real importance. Absolutely. Yet in the world that we're living in, it's not the reality, is it? Even though many who profess faith, it's not the reality of our mm. life. Mm. Bob, what about you? Well, I think I lived uh, a fairly normal, uh, crazy schedule mm -hmm. as a young man, and uh, rest never even entered my mind. I mm -hmm. think I fit into that just driven, and driven in my faith mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing. Yeah, it, it appears good though, doesn't it? It does like, appear oh, good. Wow. Yeah, yeah, really doing doing a, oh yeah, and I was doing lots of things, right? Yeah. Kingdom thing, and uh, but worn out, exhausted all the time, and uh, physically and spiritually mm -hmm. exhausted. And I think the Lord really entered into my life in a very unique way um, through a disease, cancer. I came down with cancer. How many years when ago? I was 60. So yeah. 12 years ago yeah. now. And um, I think the thing that uh, came out of that, right, is the uh, pure rest that you, in order to recover from something like that, you have got to enter into both physical and spiritual rest. And mm -hmm. the two are dramatically different. And really, you know, the reality of cancer and the reality of not knowing where you're headed with that mm -hmm. um, causes you to be drawn, obviously, into prayer, into deep prayer. Uh, you no longer can work for the Lord because you spend a lot of time horizontal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I think the reality of rest began to dawn upon me mm -hmm. there. And to be honest, a retreat that we went on, you, you led and I participated in, uh, I had a profound encounter with the Lord on that retreat, and He opened my eyes further to that to that reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, our souls need deep rest, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't tend to want to do that. Of course, we're fighting against an enemy who doesn't want us to rest, right? right? right. So, 
that's another aspect of it. But um, we need that deep rest. Just like every day we need to go. At some point during the day, you're going to bed. Yeah. And truly, at some point during the day, you need soul rest. Mm, yeah. And uh, you need to take a vacation for a couple of weeks every year, and you need to take a break and go somewhere where you can be with the Lord every year. And talk about the difference between mm. physical rest mm. and spiritual rest, because you awesome. made a, a pretty clear declaration there, which I love. So talk about the difference. What did you learn? Because you probably didn't think that yeah. until you had this forced rest as a result of your cancer. Well, this is just sound a little funny, but um, I was thinking about what we see on gravestones, mm -hmm. rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't need to wait till we're dead to rest in peace. Mm. And that's soul care. That's good. That's a great, I've never heard you say that. I think I've just come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Within the last few days, really, I, I, um, it's just, it just dawned on me that we truly need to rest in peace if we're not ready. And how many times do you go to bed at night and you sleep, but you're really not in peace, yeah. right? Mm. And we need to rest in peace. And there are ways to accomplish that when you're not getting it, you need it. You know, when you think about um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, do not be anxious right. about anything. Right. So think about anxiety and how mm. much anxiety keeps us awake or keeps us from rest. For a lot of people be like, I couldn't do a silent retreat because I don't have time. Mm. Your work is too much, our family's too much. Right. Or even on a given day, I don't have time to find, you know, moments of soul care because of all the anxiety of what's gonna happen if I don't do it. And some even think, well, it's, that's laziness. And you've both mm. been on retreats and you know it's not lazy. <laughs> it's, not uh, it's hard work to be quiet and still to listen to the Lord. But I, I love that idea, you know, do, no, don't be anxious about anything, but in mm. everything by prayer and petition right. with thanksgiving, present your request to God, which is really a meditation and intercession and casting. Present your request to God and the peace mm. of God. God. That's what made me think of it, Bob. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mm. minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. You know, I love that. And if we don't take time, you know, daily, weekly, seasonally to do that, our minds just are mm. so consumed with the noise of anxiety that it's really, really hard right. to hear his voice. You're exactly right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's good, Mark. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. You know, we don't have to wait till we're. Yeah, <laughs> so that may to come do. out of that pulpit in a, <laughs> in a week or two. You know, I'm not sure. We'll see. Wear but a R.I.P. T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on my, my, my black robe that I wear. Right. Well, talk to me a little bit about. Um, you mentioned on your retreat, something very substantial happened, and. I know some of that story, Ned. I know some of your stories in those retreats, mm -hmm. too. And I want to be clear, if, if you can't go to a retreat or haven't gone to a retreat, God's the same God on the mountain as mm -hmm. he is here in Dallas or anywhere on this planet. He can meet us anywhere. Mm -hmm. But when we do give space, you know, it seems like he doesn't waste mm -hmm. that time and, and opens our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to new things mm -hmm. in, in, in pretty significant ways. Mm -hmm. So... Ed, you want to start? You want to tell mm. a bit of one of your stories of being on one of those retreats? You know, it's uh, my son-in-law uh, had come to me. This is my first silent retreat. I think it's the same one Bob's talking about. It was one of the first men's retreats we mm -hmm. took. And mm. um, he said something to the effect, he said, I think God wants to deal with something from your past. I'm like, I don't have anything in my past. You know, I'm kind of a prideful guy. And, you know, I thought, well, there's nothing... Well, I went to my wife and I said, what could he be talking about? I don't know, you know. So anyway, I get up there and uh, I really had never been quiet like you do at a silent retreat. You start mm -hmm. on a certain evening and you really commit and make a vow to silence. And, you know, I found the first day or two, um, the, the noise of the world, you know, came in. And it wasn't really till I gave myself permission to just stop and be uh, I've heard a phrase say, ceasing from doing ripens being. Mm. And I was beginning to learn how to be. And I didn't have to carry the thoughts, the anxieties, the things that uh, keep me up at night. And I just began to lay those down, you know. And um, it was during one of the uh, morning devotionals that the Lord came crashing into me and showed me what that hurt was from long ago as a child. And I began to weep. Mm. And... Uh, it was a sweet time and everybody in the room was like, 
what's going on? Is he okay? And you know, a couple of the guys came up and said, I know we're supposed to be quiet, but are you okay? Mm -hmm. All I could do is just nod my head. But mm -hmm. it was just a very sweet time. And I think uh, being in that arena, in that setting, enabled me to stop long enough to let God just speak something very tender, very personal to me that was a hurt mm -hmm. from my past. Mm -hmm. And was able to deal with it. I had some dear brothers around, including Mark, that uh, walked that through. And at the end of that retreat, I was able to share, you know, what that was and the freedom that God had given me in that. Mm -hmm. And it was just a sweet time. But I think clearly it was being in that setting that helped open that door to just let me see something very intimate between me and him. Yeah. And it was just a, a sweet time. You say that phrase again about ceasing. Ceasing from doing doing ripens being. Yeah, that's really great, I've not heard that. And I think that's so powerful because we are prone to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, even devotionally, in terms mm -hmm. of spiritual disciplines, mm -hmm. so much of them are centered on doing. Mm -hmm. And I immediately think of Martha and Mary, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I, we, I've used that text a good bit on these recent podcasts because there is, you know, Martha doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and she's doing things for Christ, Absolutely. who's the guest at her home. But as he's the guest, in her home, Mary is at mm. his feet and she is seizing uh, to do anything and it makes Martha mad. But Jesus says, she's chosen the better portion mm. and it will not be taken from her. You know, I was reading a verse in Isaiah where the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Mm. And I really began to see that Rest begins with the heart. It's a matter of where my heart is. And my heart was so busy that it, it couldn't hear the, the pain and the thing I was dealing with. And once I began to see that and learn that God wanted to meet me there, that helped me set a new pattern, a new rhythm. I don't have an agenda for being quiet or stopping or doing. I, I can do it in my car. I can do it in my chair. You know, and sometimes it's just stopping and listening. Yeah. You know, I've, I've learned to listen over the last 10 years. And that's been huge for me because I'm a doer. You know, I, I'm a man and I can get things done, but God's saying, I, I want you to stop and just listen and be. And that's been significant for me. You know, that word, um, when you talk about the rest of the heart, mm -hmm. the heart resting, and I think maybe one of the best ways of understanding that is seeing it through the lens of surrender, mm -hmm. where, you know, even as we talk about coming to saving faith in Christ, um, when people join our church, we talk about resting mm -hmm. and receiving Jesus alone for salvation. So it's, it's that surrender. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Psalm 4610, mm -hmm. be still, know that I am God, which is a military verse, means drop your weapon. So right. it's this idea of resting. <laughs> and you can do that anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, in your car as anxious thoughts are coming in the morning, middle of the night, even while you're washing dishes mm -hmm. or writing an invoice, you know, you, you really can just go through that practice of surrender. Right. Mm -hmm is that leads towards listening, which is something we learn for sure. Mm -hmm. I want to come back to that in a minute, Ed, and talk about things that you've learned. And Bob, you can speak into that too. But tell us a little bit about that encounter, you know, mm -hmm. whatever you want, you know, about that. Because I remember it for both of you, and mm -hmm. it's, that's one of the privileges of doing these together mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. what happens to you mm -hmm. impacts me as well as I see God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. I think you know, the profound part for me was... Um, <laughs> I found myself wandering around in these mountains, beautiful mountains, um, literally, verbally, out loud, who are you? Mm. I mean, I just, I asked that question a thousand times. Mm. And um, he answered mm. in a variety, a lot of different ways, through scripture and through things that came to my <clears throat> mind and through, it just was, and that retreat, Really, the other question, right? Who are you? Well, who am I? Mm -hmm. right? And so that was the that was the dialogue mm -hmm. the whole time. Mm -hmm. Two, three days. I don't know how long we were there. A long time, but every time that I went out, every time that I sat down, everything that I did, it was all in that context. And so, you know, you talk about all the time our identity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on that three day time period, I nailed it down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really was a profound thing and it really relates back to what I said a minute ago when I was at a camp in far west Texas surrounded by mountains, nothing else around me. Um, 
I think it same, the same question was being asked when I was 13 years old. It mm-hmm. was being asked then. And, you know, that's something that we have to renew, right? Mm-hmm. Renewal is a great word. I love re-words, anything that begins with re. <laughs> Redemption, right? Yeah. Renewal, restore. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. realistically, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, and that means do over. Yeah, right. repeat. It, mm. it repeat. Right? Mm-hmm. It's it's a constant thing. It's dynamic. It's not static, and it and it ebbs and flows as we live life, and mm-hmm. as we are sanctified in Christ, and as we are made whole. It it's it's just a constant, ongoing thing. You know, so often when we um, come to the Lord, we we come with an agenda, mm. whether we know it or not. Mm. And when we do retreats, one of the things that we talk about before we go is right. do not come with an agenda. Right. And it's, it's hard. Even not coming with an agenda can be an agenda. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And we talk about don't bring anything but a Bible and something mm-hmm. to write with. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because we, we so often are uncomfortable with the unknown. You know, you didn't come into the retreat um, thinking, I'm going to ask the question, who are you? And mm-hmm. hear back, yeah. who are you? It's just right. something that God did. Is your son-in-law posed that question to you? It's like, well, what, what's going to happen here? And you could have chased it all the ways you wanted, but mm-hmm. you had no idea what was going to be revealed right. was going to be revealed. And that's actually what's beautiful mm-hmm. about these retreats. It's what's mysterious and what also can be frightening mm-hmm. to people. One of the things that happens is um, when... God moves in such a way that we're able to be still, to know he's God, and we begin to listen, that's when we have the great privilege of kind of seeing and and hearing through his word and spirit Mm -hmm. um, things that we either need to be reminded of or things we just didn't know, things we need to remember Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And to do that is not easy. It's not natural. It's not Mm -hmm. the natural man. And even in the church for people who are faith, you know, believers in Christ. Listening is still hard. Um, I actually often talk about that in prayers. Like, are your prayers primarily centered on informing God Mm -hmm. or listening to God? Mm -hmm. Informing God, this is what I'm going to do. This is my plan. Mm -hmm. Please bless it. Or is it, Father, Mm -hmm. here's where I am. Mm -hmm. How do you want to inform this? Mm -hmm. So, Ed, how or what did you learn about listening? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've figured out, I, I, I began to study a lot about lamenting and about sorrow and uh, even anger. And I, I began to learn it was okay to go to God with hard things, mm-hmm. you know, because part of what I think was keeping me from really entering into that place was not talking about to him some of the hard things, some of the things I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And, and I still deal with that. It's not like I've got it figured out, but uh, it's okay to go and... Uh, be angry about something and, and let him know what you're really dealing with. Yeah. And as I began to do that and begin to sense a freedom, um, it, it, that, that solitude, that aloneness with him became sweeter because he was right there at the bottom of that anger waiting for me saying, okay, now that you're through that, I'm still here and I'm still the same. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And it just began to give me a place to lay things down that I tried to keep in my own identity, my own strength. Mm-hmm. And some of it was that surrender, that abandonment that just says, let go. Mm-hmm. Linger was the other word. I think the Lord showed us on that, that, that abiding, just being right here. And it's okay, because I'm here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just want to give you that small, still voice that says, this is the way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just, I want to be with you. I, I get chills just thinking about the being, his being with me. It's, uh, it's a pretty sweet place yeah his presence I remember when you shared with the group about that word lingering Mm -hmm. and therefore every time I hear it I'm gonna immediately think of your face (laughs) just like and I don't know if it was our first one together or maybe a second one we were on Bob I can't remember which one but I'd been on a number of them obviously um, with different people and God had just was always so faithful to give me a word a verse a passage something Mm -hmm. that you know was opening my eyes and as you know most of the time it's People come around the table like, I never knew how much he loved me. I never knew. And I, I, on this one particular retreat, I remember thinking, you know, you, it just hadn't been quite the same. There hasn't been something that has been as strong as it's been in the past. And it was literally the morning we're leaving. So we've already broken silence. Mm-hmm. We had our feast, you know, on that Sunday night. And 
our time of sharing. It was the next morning, early, and I love it. You know, it was cold out, and I had the fire going in my little cabin, and I'm thinking about the week to come, and that's when the Lord moved. Mm. He said, you're living in dread. Mm. You're Mm. living in dread. Mm. And I had never thought about the word dread. Mm. It wasn't in what I read that morning. But, you know, just the way the Lord's voice, you know it's his, Mm -hmm. you didn't have that thought, suddenly it's there. And we're not called to live in dread, you know, Mm. but I was, and I had to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. And what what was the reason for the dread? So, you know, just a few hours before we hop on the bus to head back to, you know, Montrose or wherever we were flying out of, Mm. I heard that, and I came to you on the bus, you know, or sitting by you on the bus, and Mm -hmm. we just started talking, and I mentioned how much dread I feel. And then you turned around and you <laughs> said, remember. you want to talk about dread? <laughs> and you just looked at me. And then I was like, I don't. <laughs> I, don't I don't think so. Because you were going right back to the mm-hmm. journey you had been on mm-hmm. through that forced rest, mm-hmm. physically, mm-hmm. spiritually, and mm-hmm. how hard that was. Mm-hmm. And yet we did have a conversation about it, which it was life-changing. Mm-hmm. Just like, yeah, Lord, how do we... Which is interesting, then the next retreat, the word I walked away with was the word thrive, mm-hmm. you know, from mm-hmm. Psalm 52, 52 8. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so God does meet us in really amazing mm-hmm. ways. But learning to listen, you know, most of us aren't good at it, even in relationships, mm-hmm. certainly aren't very good at it with God. But you mm-hmm. said something interesting, Ed. You talked about it was almost like there's things that you couldn't be honest with God about or mm-hmm. emotions that you didn't mm-hmm. want to share skeet tingle who you know one day i'll be on this podcast talking about this stuff with me he often asks us the question when's the last time you had an honest conversation Mm -hmm. with jesus Mm -hmm. and why do you think we still hold back why do do you think we're afraid to talk about anger or sadness Mm -hmm. sorrow lamenting is the biblical word for it what what holds us back from really being transparent and honest, even before the Lord, right. who already knows mm. everything that's in here? I, I think some of it, back to the Isaiah verse, Mark, is that yeah, we, we know in our minds, we give lip service, we, we want to conform in a certain manner. We want to look and be accepted for what seems to be acceptable in our midst. By the people around us. By people around us, in our church, in our community, whatever. And yeah, that's fear of man. Really, the, the root of that is fear of man. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I think as I begin to deal with that and, and begin to see God working me past that, that, there became a freedom to say, you know, I, I don't have to, to stay there and do that. It began to become a matter of my heart. You know, mm-hmm. where is my heart really? Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes I have to say, God, show me my heart. You know, uh, Lord, Psalm 139, teach me know, that I may know myself, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, show me if there be any wicked way in me. And mm-hmm. uh, that's just a place of communion with him that gives us that freedom to confess it and admit it and uh, deal with it, let him deal mm-hmm. with it. I know, you know, you mentioned uh, confessing anger, you know, mm-hmm. wh- whatever the circumstances are. And some of those people, even people listening to this might be like, oh, you can't be angry at God. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, yet <laughs> his holy word, through the Psalms and, and other places, but primarily the Psalms, there's not an emotion mm. known to man that the psalmist didn't express mm. to the mm. Lord. Mm. And I love the honesty of the mm. Psalms. Mm. And then I love so often how they will just lament, cry out, where are you? Mm-hmm. And yet end with, yet I hope in the Lord. Mm. You know, so mm. it's, it's not this disconnect right. that sometimes I think we feel like would happen if we were really honest. Yeah. And you mentioned on the retreats, there's silent retreats, but there's definitely talking and singing and shouting out loud individually mm. to the Lord, which is, you it know. It's not silent. It's not silent. No, it, can be, it can be very, very loud at times, uh, you know, out in nature, right, where you're experiencing that. Well, Bob, what about you? What do you think keeps us from, you know, being that transparent before the Lord, that vulnerable, that exposed, so to speak? Um, I think Ed was right on with, you know, the, the it's not what the Christian life is, mm-hmm. right? That's not what we've made it. Mm-hmm. And 20th century evangelical Christians think differently about silence and about time with the Lord and mm-hmm. about conversations with the Lord. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of people say, oh, look, man, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, the Lord is there. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is amongst us, mm-hmm. and we are being 
spoken to all the time. Mm -hmm. The question is, do we hear? Mm -hmm. right? And I would say that we have to practice that. Mm -hmm. right? we, have to, we have to practice so much of what we believe. Mm -hmm. right? And why do we have to do that? Well, we're in a war. Somebody mm -hmm. told me somewhere along the line, we're in a war. Yeah. I have my own sin to deal with, mm -hmm. right? right? That's a war. Yep. And then I have everything else that's going on. Mm -hmm. All of that is a war. And it's a distraction from what the Holy Spirit's trying to say to us. Mm -hmm. And if we're not disciplined enough, we may be disciplined enough as we, to get up every morning and to spend time in the Word and to fill in all the blanks. But if we're not disciplined enough to sit quietly and listen to the Lord in a place where he can be heard, mm. we will not hear him. And so let's, yeah. let's talk about this for a minute. Yeah. We're kind of moving from just the retreat experiences, but now to, okay, how do we begin to practice that, mm. you know, daily, wherever we yes. are, um, in the car, on the way to work, et cetera. Yeah. You talked about being in bio, the Bible, studying the Bible. Right. Clearly that's one of the ways God speaks to us through Absolutely. his word and spirit. But we can be really active at filling out our three ring binders mm -hmm. or underlining books that we're reading, et cetera, and still never really pause mm. to listen for the Spirit's mm. guidance, which is never gonna be contrary to scripture. Mm. It's never gonna say something scripture doesn't say that, or that scripture would oppose. But there is, for so many, a lack of just, okay, I'm gonna pray and meditate, and meditation is nothing more than, you know, repeating the word over and over again, repeating mm -hmm. truths over and over again, waiting upon the Lord. But so many people, that's, that's just foreign to them. The, even to sit for one minute, mm. you know, the noise becomes mm. pretty chaotic. So how did you learn to do that? What are some things that you've learned that you think would be helpful mm. for those watching or listening mm. that you remember like, oh, I, I know when I tried this, that didn't work. And then I did this and it did mm. work. How, and so what does the Lord tell you? It's pretty simple for me. The more I listen, the more I hear. Mm. Okay, so tell me more about that. Well, I mean, yeah. it's pretty obvious, right? The but, more time I spend in a place, a quiet a place of, really, I have to, and I go back to this, I have to be surrounded not by the things of man. Mm -hmm. As I sit in the sanctuary, as beautiful as it is, I always focus on, well, you know, how is that made? Or what does this sound like? Or why can't I hear this? Yeah, there's always something. Just some potential right. distractions mm -hmm. are everywhere. They're, they're just everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I have to be in some place. Darkness helps, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm at home and I'm praying, I've got my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason we close our mm -hmm. eyes, right? I cannot see anything, then mm -hmm. I can concentrate. Attraction, distraction, you mm -hmm. know? Exactly. Right? right. And exactly. It is. It's everywhere. And you think about scriptures talking about going into your closet even. I don't know what closets look like back then. <laughs> Not like they do today. I'm pretty sure there's no. a lot of distractions in my closet. No. But the idea of closing off mm -hmm. the external mm -hmm. so that you can hear. But once you close off the external, isn't it your experience that the internal is pretty loud too? Mm -hmm. My eyes are the problem. Mm -hmm. you know, if I see something that's built by man, there's a distraction involved mm -hmm. in that. And the one thing I always know is when I'm looking at man-made things, it's temporary, right? Those, are being, those things are going away. Yeah. But when I'm surrounded in a place uh, of things that the Lord has provided, then mm -hmm. I know they're not going away. They'll be mm -hmm. renewed in the seasons ahead. And mm -hmm. that renewal is something that's available to me, just like what's about to happen right there. That's the spiritual uh, connection that I have when I'm not in. So and to, I love this church. Sure, sure, I get it. And you know, for example, I can come in here on a, on a you know, weekday, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're filming right now mm -hmm. on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, and if we weren't in here, nobody would be in here. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody might be practicing an instrument occasionally or they might be cleaning it, but it can be very quiet. And I will actually often fix my eyes on something that will remind me of a gospel story or, or mm -hmm. one of the crosses. You know, I often talk about fix your eyes on the cross. Right. Um, but the lesson I hear you saying is that this takes time. So if you're only gonna give a few minutes to it, it's gonna probably be more informing as opposed to being still and knowing mm -hmm. that I'm God. Secondly, the more time you spend, the easier it becomes because you begin Correct. to get used to it. Right. Third thing I hear is that space matters. In other words, if 
you're sitting in your bed and the TV's on and your iPad's there and other things are, emails coming, say, that's gonna be really hard mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, I'm gonna go somewhere physically, if not physically, then at least kind of spiritually where the distractions are, are put away. Mm -hmm. You notice a minute ago, I just flipped my phone over. Mm -hmm. And the right. reason is because a call came in. I don't mm -hmm. know who it was, for, but I saw it. So it's like, I don't need to see that. Mm -hmm. I know so often during the mornings and time when I'm trying to be quiet and pray or study, if this is near me, mm -hmm. it's not gonna happen. Not really. There's just too much coming. Um, but some people feel like, I, I can't. I gotta stay mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a false reality I think it's no you want to stay connected mm -hmm. fear of man is if I'm not connected what are they going to think about me as opposed to saying mm -hmm. this time matters and to be separated for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour whatever it is that you need everything's going to be okay mm -hmm. uh, but I talk to a lot of young parents and my wife you know we have little ones still and it's like so many things come at them so early in the morning about school and carpools and schedules mm -hmm. and they're like I, I gotta know it because if I don't mm -hmm. my kid doesn't get a ride or whatever and so it's like hard you know because it's just always there mm -hmm. so my point in hearing you Bob is space matters and to put ourselves in a place where those noises and distractions are you know at bay for at least a little while is really important really mm -hmm. important so I think that's a great takeaway. Ed, how about you? What's something that you've, you've learned in practice that's been beneficial? You know, I think one of the things that um, I, I had to learn through was loneliness. You know, there's a place of loneliness when you start getting quiet mm -hmm. because my identity's so tied in what I do mm -hmm. and I'm, I can make a lot of things happen. Uh, I can lose myself. This is a lonely place. This is a place I don't want to be because... I'm not, there's nothing to do. There's no agenda here. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I come from that place to say, um, Lord, why am I lonely? Is there shame? Is there confession here? Is there something I need to reveal to you about my heart that is, is making me feel that way? Because he still is waiting on the other side of that loneliness to say, I really want loneliness to become solitude. You know, I'm by myself, I'm quiet, and yet, I feel alone, and yet he's, I'm here the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I have to just begin to see that. And generally, there's something in my heart that I'm either anxious about, I'm fearful about, mm -hmm. I'm concerned about, I'm angry, you know, whatever. And, and sometimes it's through that process of confession. Lord, uh, here, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm upset about. Here's what, I'm, here's what you're showing me about myself, about my own selfishness, and you know, whatever the case may be. And I find as I begin to lay those down, it's like, okay, and then it just becomes a sweet, and then he'll show me sometimes a word, sometimes just a, a short verse, something that really begins to sink in, and I just take it with me through the day and just mm -hmm. meditate, just thinking about it. Um, oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That's just a passage I quote to myself all the time from yeah. the middle of the night till the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, He's majestic, and that's just a, a sweet phrase he's given me in some of those times. So, which leads to a great question. Um, Henry Nowen, in one of his books on solitude and silence, mm -hmm. talks about how we've lived as if we are a, a house on Main Street, and we've always had our doors and windows open, mm -hmm. and anybody could come in and out anytime they wanted. Then one day, we hear that we need to have this kind of solitude and prayer, so we close the windows mm -hmm. and, we close, and we lock the door. Mm -hmm. And yet all of those people who have been coming in and out all the time are at the windows and at the door mm -hmm. banging mm -hmm. to us in. What do we do? You know, and he says, waiting in that moment and waiting in that moment over and over again, suddenly that noise will dissipate. They'll mm -hmm. stop knocking, mm -hmm. right? but we don't feel like that's ever gonna happen. Mm. And, it, and it will happen, mm. you know, we've had that experience. But for so many of us, it just doesn't, doesn't happen quick enough. And so one of the things that he talks about is, I, I'm gonna use this phrase, anchors, mm -hmm. verses that kind of pull us back in so mm -hmm. that the, the sounds begin to dissipate. And you talked about, oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And what you're doing when you're repeating that over and over again is what? Meditation, mm -hmm. it's 
Think about Joshua 1, 8. Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Mm -hmm. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Mm -hmm. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Well, a verse like that or the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. or you know, the Jesus Prayer, um, right. repeating those things over and over again mm -hmm. can be very helpful for me. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll take the word so slowly, like be, mm -hmm. and just think about that word for a minute. Mm -hmm. Still, think about that word for a minute. And no, no, yeah. you know, no, okay, mm -hmm. I am God. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not God, he is God. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how just that simple practice of repeating scripture, yes. praying scripture, causes the, mm -hmm. just to just softly mm -hmm. disappear, right? You know, the other thing I've learned in that regard, Mark, is to say no. You know, I, uh, I've struggled with people pleasing, wanting to be accepted, all those things, and I've, I've been a pretty capable guy most of my adult life, and easy to say yes to just about everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I've gotten older, I find it's okay to say no, and that's mm -hmm. part of what keeps those voices on the outside of the window yeah. and the door mm -hmm. is, and, and, and I've given myself the freedom to say no, even when I don't have something to replace it. Mm -hmm. If somebody says, can you go to lunch next Wednesday? And I may not have one appointment, but I may say no, just because I need to say no because of the rhythm that God is leading me to of, uh, not overstressing what I'm doing. I, I can look at my calendar and say, well, I've got, you know, three appointments in a given week and that's gonna be my, and now some of these younger guys that are listening are going, three appointments in a week? How about three a day or three in a, you know? Well, I get that. Three, three at once. Three at once. <laughs> three at once. <laughs> and so, but everybody, I, I think, can find a rhythm and it's okay. I tell my son this all the time who now runs our business. Son, it's okay to say no even when you don't have something on your calendar and save that space for mm -hmm. you. And he's young, running with his hair on fire, and it's hard for him to hear that. Yeah. He's capable, he can get it done. Oh, Dad, you don't understand. Well, yeah, I do understand. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that age doesn't have something to do with that. You yeah. begin to see and you Experience. reflect and you look back and just simply saying, no, you know, I can't right now. Mm -hmm. You know, every time we say yes, we're saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. Right. And every time we say no, we're given the potential of saying yes to something else, even if we don't know what that is. Yeah. And I love what you just said, because I, th I think that's so important. Going back to fear of man, mm -hmm. well, what would they think? And, you know, all of us have busy calendars that people want on the calendars, and we want people on our calendars. It's, it's a sweet thing. It's a gift to be with people. But there's a point, you know, and Jesus made this very clear. Yes. You know, he didn't heal every person mm -hmm. on earth. He didn't uh, give up being alone with the Father. Mm. Um, he took rest seriously, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Mm. And he was obviously exerting himself to the utmost, often very exhausted. I mean, he falls asleep on a boat mm. in the midst of a squall, right? right. It, it makes no sense other than he was absolutely empty. But he did not miss, you know, the importance of that time alone mm. with the Lord, which I think is, is so very powerful. And, um, you know, when we think about doing this for the Lord versus doing this with the Lord, mm. there's a change mm. that happens. Mm. That phrase came to me actually on a silent retreat where I was encouraging people to go to one of the places on the property in Colorado where there's three crosses, there's crosses on three different parts. And I was like, go, just sit at the cross, mm. be still at the cross. Mm -hmm. Just think about what happened on the cross and the fact that Jesus isn't there anymore. He rose from the dead, just do that. And that was a great exercise. Mm. A year or two later, we do it again. And the Lord really shared something with me as I was praying. He's like, are you doing that, going to the cross with me mm. or for me? Mm. Okay, that was a mm. significant change mm -hmm in the way I spend time with the Lord. Mm. What do you think that means? Mm. Mm. What's well, the difference? I think that's a great, <laughs> I think that's a great question, right? And the question that we, we all have to ask ourselves every morning, mm -hmm. right? Are we, am I working for the Lord or mm. am I working with the Lord? Yeah. Right? Are the things that I'm doing, is he, is he with me as the Holy Spirit living and abiding in what I'm doing right now? Mm -hmm. Am I mm -hmm. present and is he present? Mm -hmm. 
you know, that presence is, we talk about presence in this room a lot, mm -hmm. right? Right. It's that presence that means with, yeah. right? A lot of us, and I'm certainly fall into that category, spend a lot of time for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think some of it has to do with uh, our, our ability to do things. You know, I, mm -hmm. I can earn my salvation in a sense. Well, we know it's a gift of grace. Yeah. And when we're working for the Lord, well, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. I'm doing mm -hmm. a good job for the Lord. Well, the scripture says even our best works are nothing but filthy rags before him. And he uses the foolish to confound the wise. He uses the abased. And as I think about that, he, he used a prostitute at a well. He didn't use one of the leaders. He used a prostitute at a well to emphasize worship. And, you know, I think about that and go, well, Lord, who am I? You know, I, I think it's going to come through me because I'm working for you. I'm doing it. That's not it. It's yeah. do it with me. And therefore, it frees me not to feel like I have to do so much. A little is a lot in yeah. his economy. And mm -hmm. if I'm just obedient in the little thing, he'll multiply it to the much. Yeah. Mm. So. I think it's amazing because it, it, we can do, in our hearts and minds, we can do things for the Lord and then just inform him about it. He's not really mm -hmm. even with us. But if we're doing it with him, then it is going to be for him mm. always, mm. right? Mm. And yeah. that difference, I think, helped open my eyes to the reality of our union with Christ, our intimacy. And the, where it came from was literally at one of those crosses. I'm sitting there just thinking about it. And then I realized I'm kind of doing this in isolation mm. from him. Mm. Like I'm just, it's almost like he's, he's not in me the mm. way he says he is. And it was almost transactional mm. as opposed to any thought I have about the cross, about what he did there is going to be enhanced greatly when I recognize his omnipresence, mm -hmm. when I recognize mm -hmm. his spirit is, li is living in me. Mm -hmm. It opens my eyes to, to things I haven't seen before, mm -hmm. to the glory of God in new ways. And, mm -hmm. and he goes before you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not fighting against things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the Lord is in front of you, you can feel that. Mm -hmm. and, and when he's not... And, you, can, talking, feel you can feel that too. That, for me, one of the t one of the places that happens often is um, mm -hmm. when I use the word press. Mm -hmm. Like I'm studying the Word of God, getting ready for a sermon or something along those lines, and I can feel myself pressing. Mm -hmm. You know, because something's not clicking yet, or mm -hmm. you know, I I, I want to get this far by this time mm -hmm. because the next thing's coming. And, and it's just not there. Yeah. And I can feel my, my you know, body wanting to press. And God is so kind and so quick to say, let go. Mm, let go. Just let go. Let go. And when I let go, it's going to be greater, more mm. beautiful, mm. deeper, mm. clearer. You know. our, our brother Rick Lehman uh, one time in talking around these issues said it's like breathing underwater. Mm -hmm. Very hard to do. Yeah, you're just not naturally mm. able to do that. Yeah, but you're mm. so right that if you just let go. Mm. Yeah, mm. you know, uh, Ed, a minute ago when you were talking about that time alone with the Lord and learning to say no and those kinds of things, I was thinking about the Dutch theologian O. Halsby, and he he wrote a book called Prayer in the '40s, I think, and he starts the book off by saying. I don't think there is a verse in the Bible that says more about prayer than mm -hmm. this verse. Mm -hmm. And I read that verse and I was like, that's an interesting verse. And so I've taught on prayer many times and often at the beginning of, if it's a retreat or something, I'll say, all right, I'm going to read this to you. I doubt there's no verse in the Bible that says more about prayer than this verse. Mm -hmm. What would you put down? And I've done this hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. um, nobody's ever picked his verse. Mm -hmm. Not once, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, the verse is Revelation 3.20. Mm -hmm. Jesus saying, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Mm -hmm. Halsby goes on to say, 
That's the clearest definition of prayer. Mm. Because he's talking about the union, the communion mm -hmm. with God, mm -hmm. where God is ever present. Mm. And we are told, John 15, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be given to you. And mm. it's, he's giving us the mind of Christ. Mm. So we're gonna ask for things from the mind of Christ. Mm. And that idea of a meal, uh, open the door, mm. I will come in and eat with you and you with me. And God's the one who initiates. Mm. That's yeah. the other point he's mm. making. God's mm -hmm. the one who knocks mm. on the door. Mm. And all of a sudden when you begin to rest in that and realize the world was created and all the universe, everything by this God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, mm. who's knocking on the door to spend time with me, mm. yeah. with me. Mm -hmm. That begins to change everything. Mm -hmm. And it introduces us into this opportunity for intimacy that we didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. Another reword. Relationship, mm, right? Yeah, relationship. Right. Yeah. Well, we, we continue, Mark. It's that sanctifying process. It's the being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ through all of this process. We're never going to arrive. We're never going to get there. Yeah. You know, Paul even said I, he was uh, the greatest of all sinners. He never arrived. So yeah. how, how would we? And yet, as, as I get older and I see the sweetness of that relationship, uh, it's the kind of thing you want more, you know? It's not me doing more, it's him doing more in me that, mm. said, that draws me to, I want more of that because it's real and it's mm. genuine. Uh, it's, it's the heart of that relationship that makes it significant. It, it, I tell people this all the time, it really is true. Like, you know, first of all, you heard this, I know when you shared with people about silent retreats, how many people said, oh, I can never do that. Mm. And I, I always mm. tell them, <laughs> Look, if I can do it, <laughs> I mean, I am hyperactive. My mind is hyperactive. Um, you know, I would have been put on medicine as a child, but they medicated parents instead of the children. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, so if, if God can transform my heart in this, he can do that with anybody. And I tell people that. It's like, no, no, you can do it. But once you begin to mm -hmm. experience it, mm. then it becomes something that it's actually not, an option anymore. Mm. And I don't mean just retreats, but it really, it, it's not an option. I can't run at a pace where this is no longer part of my life. Right. It, even though the world's telling me there's not enough space for mm -hmm. this, or the, the calendar's you know, too full, or the needs of this world are too much. Mm. That's exactly what Satan wants to do, mm. because he, you, know, you need to be doing, 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 and then you do all that all the time, and aren't being, you know, the consequences are just yeah. horrific. They are yeah. horrific. One of the things I've yeah. seen on nearly every retreat, we've been on just men's retreats, we've been on couples retreats. Um, typically there's one or two people that come and the first day they're there is they do nothing but sleep. They're just exhausted. They're exhausted. Yeah. And we tell them it's okay. It's good for if that's that may be the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap all yeah. afternoon. And they don't, they feel shame. They feel shame. Yeah. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be, you know, you're not supposed to be doing anything but just being. Yeah. And they are refreshed and do, and they, they sometimes get the greatest experience out of just simply taking a nap. Yeah, and the freedom, you mm -hmm. know, that because in a way, physically, there's nothing more passive than sleeping, yeah. right, than, than resting. Same thing's true spiritually, you know, in a way, where it's, when we get to a place of, I really need this, I need to be still and know that he is God, not just amped up with all the, mm -hmm. you know, the difference is really be between being driven and being called. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we begin to see that, it's like, okay, there is such life mm -hmm. in that. But back to that phrase from earlier, calling, you know, can easily be replaced with, I'm called and I'm, and I'm doing it for him, mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to I'm called and I'm doing it with him. One of the things I love to tell people is imagine each day, the Lord knocking at your door saying, can you come out and play? Mm -hmm. Remember when you were little? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd go to your friend's house. Right. Can Todd come out and play? Can Mark come out and play? And we rarely had an agenda. Right. We'd, we'd figure one out, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. was rarely an agenda. And I really think there's something about that with the Lord where mm -hmm. it's just going to open your word. Maybe I'm reading through a schedule, which is fine, but I'm going to do this with you mm -hmm. as opposed to for you. I'm going to pray, not just my list of things to pray over, but I'm going to pray over these things with you mm -hmm. as opposed to for you. And suddenly that union really mm -hmm. comes alive in a way that 
maybe it hasn't before. Mm -hmm. Just just sitting quietly and letting Scripture just come into your mind. Mm -hmm. Just let the Holy Spirit just bring Scripture to your mind. Mm -hmm. And it happened to me this morning, Psalm 51, restore the joy of my salvation. Mm -hmm. I I just, it hit me. I was thinking about reward. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Restore. Restore. And then, of course, renew a right spirit. And, you know, yeah. that's, it's in the same. I mean, they're right there together. And yeah. You just, things like that that just come. That's not by accident. Yeah. They're there for a reason. Uh, and you need to, I think we need to tune ourselves to hear those mm-hmm. things and to believe that the Holy Spirit has put those things there for a for a reason. Yeah. A lot of thoughts come mm. into my mind. There's a purpose in that. Yeah. Right. You know, back to your point on transparency, uh, why we do and why we don't. I think one of the things the retreats have done for me is they become a safe place for not only me, but for anybody that's there. there there's a, a bonding that happens, a, a, mm-hmm. a, a verbal, a, not a verbal, but a, 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 a communication in silence, I think is the way we put it. Uh, a nonverbal communication, I guess the way you'd say it, but uh, it's significant, you know, it's real. And, and every time we've been on one, I've come away connected with people in a way. I think that's where Bob and I first mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. connected mm-hmm. As, as dear friends was on that first men's retreat because mm-hmm. of what he experienced, what mm-hmm. I experienced. And those are things you don't do every day when you're walking around Dallas, Texas. But when you're there together, there's something significant about it. And there's a, a unity and, a, and a, a bond that creates. And so that safe place, I think, is a significant part of it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I agree totally from the very first one we did to, you know, the ones that we're going to do this fall. Mm-hmm. Um, hundreds of people have gone now, and it's, it's been such a profound experience for them individually with the Lord, but also corporately. Mm. And what's amazing is most of the time we're not talking to one another, right. but something so significant happens that you just, it's kind of like the disciples, you know, in the book of Acts, judge for yourselves whether it is right for us to obey God, man, mm. for we mm. cannot help mm. speaking about mm. what we have seen mm. and heard. And it really is, who is he? You know, mm-hmm. he, he expands. Well, brothers, I am, I'm very grateful and um, look forward to continuing these conversations and doing other retreats together, but also just continuing to learn from one another about how, you know, we walk with the Lord daily in in this crazy world that we live in. I'm grateful for you watching or listening to this podcast with Ed and Bob today. Um, If you're in the Dallas area and would like to participate in one of the retreats, um, this fall in September of 2022, we will have a women's retreat and a men's retreat. And we'll have information on that in the show notes that follow this. Also, though, if there's something you heard today and you just would love to talk to a pastor or someone at our church, you can reach out to us at deeplight at pcpc.org. We would love to come alongside you and share with you more about what it means to walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, We believe deeply in the Holy Scriptures, His Holy Word, that He is the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And we are not perfect people in any way. We we stumble, we fall, Mm -hmm. but we love Him because He loved us first. And Mm -hmm. we'd love to share more of that with you. God bless you. May the Lord truly overwhelm you with who he is. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Deep Light Podcast from Park City's Presbyterian Church. We would love for you to be our guest this Sunday morning as we gather together for worship at 8, 9.30, or 11 a.m. We are located in the Uptown Dallas area at the corner of Oakland Avenue and Wycliffe Avenue. To find out more, please visit PC.